people that love you, and it's a wonderful thing to be loved by people. All the people that you love, it's a wonderful thing to love other people. To see the blessings that God has put in your life. There will be days, there will be seasons of peace and prosperity and good health. And just all the good things in life. And you'll be able to see it from the perspective of, man, I can see the horizon. I see where I came from. I see where I'm going up at the top of that mountain. All I've got to do is just continue on. You're happy. It's great. It's peaceful. My advice to you is enjoy those days. Mm. Suck the marrow out of those days. <laughs> because winter is coming. <laughs> Any uh, Game of Thrones guys out there, winter is coming. And it's not always going to be like that because you're going to have days of uncertainty and fear. Yeah, yeah just going to. You know, I talked about walking through the bear country. Didn't see a bear, but I thought about him so much. You know, and as we go through life, there's things that we can worry about that probably are a mile away from us. No chance of ever touching us. But we worry about it and we make them a reality in our life. You know, we worry about our health like that. You know, heart attacks and cancer, those are real things. And if you encounter one, just like if you encounter a grizzly bear on the trail, you've got a situation you've got to deal with. But the vast majority of us are not going to die like that. We're never going to get cancer. And yet, if you allow that worry about seeing that bear to ruin your beautiful trip up the mountain, if you allow that worry about your health, that worry about getting cancer, that worry about having a heart attack, here's what I'm saying. Do what you can. Eat right. Exercise. Go to the doctor. Regular checkups. Good oral hygiene. You know, everything you can do. But then, trust God yeah. and don't allow yourself to just get devastated by uncertainty and fear. Amen. My pinky hurts Right. Pinky cancer. <laughs> and we worry about it. Hmm. And it affects the now because we're uncertain. We're worried about these things. I guess maybe I'm the only one. Maybe I'm the only one. <laughs> Don't let your fear of the bear enjoy ruin that beautiful walk up the mountain. Amen. You're going to have days of pain. You know, we can, we can define our lives on certain life-defining days. You know, we all have a date, like what Jeff was sharing. Said, you know, five years ago yesterday, that was a big day in my life. Because I realized I was ruining it. Five years later, I'm good. Amen. You can point back, you know, maybe it's a good thing that happened to you. You know, I won the gold medal in Oslo that year. It was fantastic. It changed my life. <laughs> but maybe it's, I got hit by a car one day, and I had to have nine surgeries in 16 months. That was a life-defining, changing day for you. There's going to be days like that. Yep. You know, we uh, we also get referred pain. You know, it's like you have your own pain and your own problems. I found that when other people have problems, sometimes it's more painful for me. Yeah. Yeah. If your friend comes to you and tells you a problem, they say, you know, look, I'm struggling with my marriage, really upset. You know, you listen and it, it bothers you. You feel their pain. But... I'm still going to Cheesecake Factory for lunch that day. <laughs> Call me a bad person. <laughs> but when your friend has a problem, you have a problem and you feel their pain. When you have a child, especially an adult child that has a problem, you don't feel their pain. You feel your pain. Yeah. You have a referred pain. When your adult child comes to you and they say things like, you know, I just lost my job, Dad. I don't know what we're going to do financially. That's not just their problem. That's your problem. Mm. You feel the disappointment and the sting that he feels. Yeah. Your kid comes to say, you know, our marriage is really struggling. It's on the rocks. You feel that. Your kid comes to you and says, we're getting a divorce. You feel that. That's not just, that's not their pain. That's your pain. In fact, I think it hurts you more than it hurts them. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a, there's a scientific equation. It's y equals 2x plus 3 to describe it. Y is their pain, x is your pain. Your kid comes to you with a level 4 pain. That gives you a 2x plus 3. That gives you an 11. 2x, 2 times 4, plus 3 is 11. Your kid's got a 4. You've got an 11 level pain. Your kid comes to you with a level 7 problem. You've got a 14 plus 17 level pain. Where are you getting these numbers from? <laughs> Science. 
<laughs> That's been my experience. It hurts more when my kids have a problem mm -hmm. than when I have a problem. Right. And there's going to be days of pain, not only your pain, but your kids' pain. Yeah. It's and you're when you have a baby, you're exposed yeah. for the rest of your life. Yeah. You're exposed. Yeah. It never stops. It never quits. You know, in 2003, I had a life-defining moment. I got out of the ministry. I'd been in the ministry my whole entire life, which was a long time. And I got out of the ministry, and it was hard. It was difficult. Some of you guys are around, you know. Um, and I remember getting out into real estate and out into the business world. It's like I realized very quickly that my achievements and accomplishments in the ministry were really didn't carry a whole lot of weight in the world. Yeah, you know, talking to a broker. Yeah, you know, I used to lead a church of 3,000 people. Oh, that's marvelous, darling. <laughs> well, I right here. well, that's marvelous. Let's go sell some houses, shall we? You know? Because that is just, that's not that impressive for people. And you, that's a life-defining moment, and you have to, you have to reroute. You have to figure things out. You have to get going. What do you do, though? In life, just like on that trail, you just put one foot in front of the other. Sometimes the only advice I had for, for me, what am I going to do? Keep breathing. Yeah. Just got to keep breathing. You know, take that right foot, put it out there, throw the left one out, do it again. Rinse, lather, repeat. Just that's how you get through life sometimes. So then, you know, we're, we're cruising up this thing. And we're doing these switchbacks forever and ever and ever. And finally, we get up to the Shaley Ledge. And what it is, it's like a long trail about 75 yards across and up to the left is just this impossibly high you know just shale ledge and it's gargantuan and gargantuan is a great word right but you just so rarely get to use it in a sentence but then anybody okay good and then down to the right you can see there there's like this sloping area of just loose shale rock and it's several hundred feet down now it's not that it was that steep but if you were to trip and i'm exhausted and hallucinating and if you were to trip and stumble and you fall down there you're going to be pretty banged up and uh you know so we're cruising on down there and then as you get to the end of it you get to a tunnel you can show that one you see that hole in the in the mountain up there? Right up there. And you see people climbing up? That's a that's a tunnel that miners dynamited through so they could get up to Crip Lake. And that's where a lot of them die. And there's a 30-yard long tunnel that you have to climb up an iron ladder, 10 rungs, and you look down and it's all that shaley rock down there. If you fall, you're dead. Okay, let's just say it. And you climb up there, and I'm not a heights guy. Jackson was like, he was just, you know, the lady in the walker. I'm like, I'm holding on to grim death. You know, I get up, I get up to the top, step across, one leg on the, on the, the ladder, the other leg in the tunnel, below an abyss. And I step across into the tunnel. Now, the funny thing is, Jackson hated the tunnel. The tunnel was pitch black. He hated it. I loved the tunnel. Because I was pretty sure I wasn't falling out. <laughs> but it's, it's, you have to get down, you have to crawl on your hands and knees, 35 yards, through the tunnel. And then the tunnel opens up onto an 800 foot sheer cliff. And here's the hole of the tunnel in the cliff. And you walk up there, and there's no handrails. You just look, and it's just straight down. And uh, I could see people on the ledge, you know, because there's a little, like, a few kind of steps down. And then the ledge, it's about this wide, and it goes up and around, and you couldn't see how far it was. It turned out to be about 35 yards up and around the side of the cliff. You couldn't see how far it was, so there was that uncertainty and fun also. And I see people doing this, and, yeah, that's, that's a picture on the ledge. And... Um, you know, plenty of people turn back at this point. The more intelligent people. But you know, I figured, I figured Jackson and I, we flew here, we flew from Georgia to Montana. And then we drove from Montana to Canada. And then we got on a boat and went to the trailhead. And we went up through the trees. We got up above the tree line. We went through bear country did those, endured those 
switchbacks going forth, went across the shaley ledge, went up the iron ladder, crawled on her hands and knees through the tunnel. By God, we are going to Crip Lake. <laughs> I am not turning back, but there's one reason why I didn't turn back, and it was that kid, Jackson. If he had not been there, I'm like, what if you? What if you? I can't. <laughs> I, I absolutely know. Because I, I found out that day, I am not an adrenaline junkie. I felt the adrenaline, sure enough. But it wasn't like, this is something I want to experience again and again and again. But once is fine. That once was one too many. I would have gone back if not for that kid. But I looked at Jackson. And he looked at me, and there was no shred of doubt in his mind. He had this huge grin on his face. Like, isn't this the greatest thing that's ever happened in our lives? And so, you know, I, I realized then and there, I'm going to Crip Lake. I may not make it back, but I'm going to Crip Lake. And so, you know, I just, we just kind of looked at each other, and we just kind of locked in, and we got what I describe as hyper focus. When you get in a situation where it's life or death or you feel like it's life or death, everything goes away and you're just like, you are locked in. And so I gave him one of these, you know, two clicks down the road, soldier. You know, it's like, we're going we're gonna to do this together. So, of course, he leaves me in the dust. And it's a good thing because I, I sensed, again, in my hyper-focusedness, I sensed that he was not scared at all. He was just having a ball. And that's a good thing because then I didn't worry about him one other second. It was like, Jackson who? I was focusing on getting daddy up that mountain. And so I climbed down on that ledge. And my hands are sweating right now I'm telling you about it. <laughs> climbed down on that ledge. And I mean, there was like <clears throat> weeds, rocks, and all the, all the stuff on the, on the ground. It was like loose shale rock. You know, couldn't you at least have like, you know, some... Something you could grip onto, but it was just like, okay, right foot, left foot, and there was a steel cable bolted into the mountain, thank God, that you could hold on to. And of course, some people are like, you know, they're like, hey, hold on to the cable. <laughs> Take a picture. Dogs are just, bloop, bloop. they're just right up it, you know, and I was just like, not me, man. I was like, <laughs> I was so focused in on getting up that mountain. So I start out, it's up and around 35 yards. And I tell you what, when I got to the top of that thing, there was such a feeling of relief and, you know, just absolute joy. And then it was only about another hundred yard walk onto the lake. And we got to the lake and it was spectacular. I mean, there were mountains all around. It's up on top of the mountains, this little alpine, pristine, crystal clear water lake. There were icebergs in the water. There were waterfalls all over the place. There were bald eagles, too numerous to count. I mean, it was like, this is the most amazing place. And so, well, Steve, was it worth it? And I said, well, I'll tell you when I get down. Then I got down, and yes, it was worth it. The food tasted great. We had a pimento cheese sandwich. Jackson dropped it in the ground. He picked it up. There's dirt all over. Just put it back. I had a carrot. It was fantastic. <laughs> bottle of water. It was so good. You know, and, and the, the people that made it up there, you know, you were just like, we bonded today, you know? I mean, you just felt so close to them because you had been through something. And see, that's the journey that we are all on. We're on our way. And when we get to heaven, you know, the Bible says that God has prepared a place for us that no, no eye has seen, no mind can even conceive of. Right. Think about heaven. You can't even get in the same zip code. It's like we cannot conceive of how amazing and beautiful and perfect life is going to be. I mean, that's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. When you get to heaven, it's going to be like, that's just like a dim memory. And we're all on that journey together. I got to the top of that mountain. I made it to Crip Lake for one reason, one reason only. It was, it was Jackson. It was absolutely Jackson. And I'm going to make it on my journey to heaven. And it's going to be because of people. A lot of times we would like to say people aren't that important in our walk with God. That's not right. People are hugely important. Now, it's you and God. And it's like, well, I have a personal relationship with God. There's nobody else involved. That's not how it works. Yeah, you have a relationship with God. But people motivate us. People encourage us. 
People console us. People comfort us. People get us to do things that we would never have done. Yeah, that's right. Right. And that's the way life has been designed, and that's the way it works, and that's the way you're going to get to heaven. I'm going to get to heaven because of several people. That little silver old lady right there? <laughs> She's a big reason why I'm going to get to heaven. She has been a source of unending love for me. That beautiful woman back there, right. my wife, I'm going to get to heaven because of her. Jim Lenahan, Tim Cummings, people gave me a second chance. Are you kidding? That's huge in your life. The people that believe in you and think this guy can be something. Even though he was on the trash heap, we can do something with this guy. I appreciate that. I, I love that. And there's a lot of people. Nick Stone Street, I mean, I look around the room. Sandra Dotson Lucas, you know, just people that I had known. Leanne taught her to drive when she was little. <laughs> Jonathan looks, you know, just and see you, if you're standing up here, you can look at me safe, and you can count up all those people too. Yeah. So today I want to encourage you in closing. I want to encourage you to be someone 